Oh, Tommy, 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 we've got a lot to discuss because the 2021 BMW M3 and M4 just debuted. And I gotta say, and I hate to say it, both cars look like angry beavers. No, you're wrong. Okay, sort of wrong. In this video, we are going over everything you need to know about the new M3 and M4. We'll talk about the styling, we're gonna talk about engines, pricing, that's coming up right now. All right, Tommy, as you know, uh, this is the sixth generation M3 and the second generation M4, internally known as the G80 and the G82. Uh, they replaced the, I believe, F80 and F82 models. Uh, and BMW certainly created a styling stir with this because, well, like I said, uh, both cars to me resemble, you know, a very, well, perturbed beaver. Yeah, the kidney grills have grown substantially. They're now more like kidney faces, if we're being honest. They are the entire height of the front end, and it's gonna be one of those things that I think you either really love or really hate, or really dislike and really hate, depending on your viewpoint here. But um, look past look past the big grill and look at the rest of the car, and I think you'll find that it's actually a pretty attractive vehicle. Look, do you remember like Chris Bengel? Yep. He came on and he made some designs that made everyone the really mad. Butt. Yeah, the Bengel butt. Uh, but the 5 Series Bengal design vehicle, I think, is the best looking 5 Series ever. And who knows, maybe like 10, 15 years down the road, we're going to look back at the G80, G82, M3, M4 and think, ah, those were actually pretty interesting. Look, dude, you got to admit, with this European license plate, uh, this M3 and M4, they look like they're chomping on a big stick. It's a little weird. It's going to look even weirder when you put an American license plate, this big square thing in the middle. But if you live in the state where you don't need a front plate, it might be better, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, you know what? Uh, I'm going to say, uh, and usually I'm the grumpy one here, I'm going to say I will reserve judgment until I actually see them in person because oftentimes pictures uh, and the real thing are very different. Uh, but uh, let's go and talk about the facts. First of all, the most important thing is that they're going to go on sale March of 2021. And in this video, like I said, we're going to talk about styling, performance, technology, and pricing. Uh, and there's also another first mm -hmm. uh, in this series of uh, new M3 and M4s that we're going to get to in a second. Um, so let's start with some of the physical size of the vehicle, right? It's going to be 1.8 inches longer in wheelbase than the old M3 and M4. And let's talk about the M3 and M4. Uh, and just talk about the M3 to keep it simple. What's the difference between the two? Well, basically, four door sedan two-door coupe, the M3 is a four-door sedan, the M4 is the two-door coupe. Now both cars are 4.6 inches longer, they're also slightly wider and taller than the ones they're replacing. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is the kidney grille. They are large, they are frameless, and BMW says it's done to feed more air to the radiator, so maybe it's functional. Although um, I feel like you could add a smaller kidney grill and just bigger normal grills, you know what I mean? I mean, if you get rid of the kidney grill, I see a lot of like Julia Quadra full, full, full Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Full, 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 in the front end of this car. All right. So BMW engineers, you know, I, I've been doing this long enough to know that most of the cooling for a new car doesn't come from the grill. It comes from underneath, right? Uh, so maybe, you know, if you can make the argument that it's also for the brakes uh, and, well, the, and for the air conditioner no, and, no, look. and to keep, you know, the dog in the back seat cold. The grill is big enough where it extends underneath. It basically is the underneath <laughs> at this point. Uh, now, around back, both cars get a rear spoiler, quad exhaust, and LED taillights, uh, extended side skirts down the side, which are pretty cool. You can also get shadow line lights with darkened inlays. There's also the laser light headlights available as an option. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you kind of look at it from different angles, like the back, it looks pretty good. Like, I think it's a good looking car. Hey, is there a carbon fiber exterior package? There is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can see you diligently reading the notes. Braces? <laughs> no, there's no, no braces available. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Although, do you see these like yeah. scoops on the hood? Yeah, I yeah. think the, the scoops on the hood are really cool looking. They kind of sweep back uh, above the BMW M logo and then you've got this like little I hump. I tried to get past that kidney grill. No, no, grill. but look, look at the little hump down the hood. It's like the M1. Like, like your eyes are drawn to the kidney grill. Just, just that. <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, that's cool. No, no, like the little... Yeah, yeah I see them. The, the, little, the little hump uh, yeah, and yeah. The, the nostrils yeah. are really cool. All right, cool. So let's talk about performance right. because that's the numbers and these are the things you care about. So both cars are using an engine code named S58. That's a three liter twin turbo straight six. It's the same engine you find in the current, which is new, X3 and X4M. 
Yeah, um, 473 horsepower, 406 pound foot of torque, six speed manual transmission is sticking around. Thank you, BMW. I'm very grateful with the manuals dying that you kept uh, both cars with a manual. But not in the competition version, which is like the crazy high performance. So it's just coming to the standard M3 and M4. If you get the manual, you get a 50 pound weight savings over the automatic. And in standard form, both cars would do zero to 60 in according to BMW, 4.1 seconds. Now, let me say something about this engine. Okay, so I drove this engine in the X3 and X4, twin turbo straight six, yep. really strong power plant, really no turbo lag. Uh, if you get the BMW M340i yep. in the G20, uh, that has a three liter single twin scroll turbo, so it's very confusing. So BMW makes a three liter straight six with a single twin scroll, and then the M cars get a three liter straight six with twin single scrolls. You know, the most important thing about all that you said was straight six, because most manufacturers, of course, do a V6 because of packaging, and it's great that BMW, uh, you know, is sticking to their guns and doing uh, the straight six, which keeps the hood long and um, like, apparently needs a lot of cooling. I'm sorry, I keep going okay. back to it. I, I guess stop just, looking just, at just it. Just don't look at all it. Right, M3, right. M4 competition, yes. the competition being the high performance model. What are the horsepower and torque numbers? Uh, 503 horsepower. 479 pound foot of torque. Uh, this time you get the eight speed automatic, so yeah. no uh, manuals available. Pretty cool. Wah, wah, wah. It's okay, uh, you can get it in the standard car. What's the zero to 16? They're saying 3.8 seconds, so pretty quick. Now, competition, um, you know, Mercedes Benz C63, the Alfa Romeo, the name I can't say. Uh, Portfolio. That. Four leaf clover. Uh huh. That's what that is. Uh, you know, Audi, of course, is playing in the super high performance sports sedan segment. And of course, Tesla. Yeah. Free performance. Which will do zero to 60 in, I think, 3.2, if I recall. 3.2. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, probably won't go around a corner as quick, um, but certainly in a straight line, uh, it's hard to outperform electric cars with instant torque. So I'm going to tell you something really crazy. What's that? This generation M3 and 4 is the first that are available in all-wheel drive. So it's going to be late availability, the first cars to launch for rear-wheel drive. So that's a surprise. Exactly. But coming next kind summer... Like the M5. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Coming next summer is the X-Drive all-wheel drive system. So this is a similar system to what you'd find in the M5. There's active M differentials that can split torque between the rear wheels. You can go into two-wheel drive mode. Yeah, which is cool because you can do burnouts. Yeah, you can do burnouts just like the M5. Uh, you have to, of course, turn off stability control and traction control and all that to do uh, two-wheel drive mode. But there's four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive sport, and two-wheel drive modes just like the M5. So pretty cool stuff, especially if you live in snowy environments. Yeah, um, especially if you live uh, someplace where you can do burnouts because the trickiest thing about uh, the M5, which actually I've driven, is it's so cool to be able to switch from all-wheel drive to two-wheel drive because it completely changes the character of the car, right? It turns it from uh, kind of a stable and very quick and very fast uh, performance sedan to just a hooligan because you, you can just go <laughs> in circles with the rear wheels burning those rear tires off. It's uh, really cool. Uh, like I say, it makes it into more of a muscle car, you know, in the same light of a Hellcat as opposed to a European driving machine. Or you can just get the rear wheel drive M3 and do that in any any mode because it's rear wheel drive. Yes, that's another option. Okay, so but, both. But in snow years. Stuck. Both cars get body and chassis improvements, so yep. they come standard with the adaptive end suspension, adjustable wheel slip functions as well, brake pedal feel so you can set up the car exactly how you want, a 1.5 inch wider front track for better handling, and there's six piston front brakes, single piston floating rear brake calipers, and optional M carbon ceramics, which I imagine are going to be crazy expensive, and gold painted calipers if you get these ceramics. Now, it doesn't say so, but the previous generations of the M cars have been built uh, actually in Munich. Mm, there you go. Yeah, so the 3 Series specifically. Technology, so 2021 M3 and M4 get the same interior uh, improvements as their more standard entry-level counterpart, so 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. There's also a 10.25 inch touchscreen infotainment display. Uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, both come standard. And no more fees, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, good. That was really weird when BMW would charge you a fee for those. Uh, I think that was uh, a, 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 an attempt at a subscription service that thankfully failed. So there's iDrive Zeben is the operating system, or iDrive 7. There's new setup Dunk buttons. Shun, Mr. Micah, have Micah. Yeah, there's new setup buttons on the center console, uh, which will allow you to quickly 
adjust power trim. Yeah, you know, there's that M button, right? That's been around for a while. Yeah, for so, sure. So basically, uh, one of the things that, that the Germans have gotten deep into is allowing you to completely personalize uh, how you want everything in the vehicle set up from the steering feel because it's electric, right, to the throttle response, uh, to uh, the suspension uh, set up. Uh, I, I, find it, um, I find it something that Paul would appreciate on the racetrack. But, but to me, it's probably a little bit over the top. Well, there's also an M Drive Professional, which includes a lap timer. Like I said, heads up display that you can actually see while you race through your phone yeah. on an app. Pretty cool. All right, so driver assistance technologies, not that interesting in the M3, M4, but it's a similar thing you'd find in the standard 3 series. Uh, heated seats, Harman Kardon audio, park distance control are come standard. There's also heated steering wheel, power trunk lids, gesture controls where you can like do this thing to turn up the volume. Uh, wireless charging are all part of an executive package. Now let's talk about pricing. Yeah, let's talk about it because, uh, you know, it's actually... Uh, it's, it's pretty actually, expensive. It's pretty expensive, but not out of line with uh, what you would assume. So why don't you spill the beans and tell them how much it's going to cost for the regular and the competition. And the 2021 BMW M3 non-competition starts at $41,000 and goes... 41? No, I'm kidding. Sorry. <laughs> the 2021 BMW M3 non-competition... Making sure I'm paying attention yeah. here? starts at $71,000, and the M3 comp starts at $74,000. The uh, M4 is a little bit more expensive, with the standard one starting at 73, with the competition starting at about oh. 75, six. Seven, yeah, well, 72,795. dollars $72,795. Honestly, Dad, I think if you're paying over $72,000 for a car, that $205 is not gonna be the difference between whether or not you buy it. Well, you know, we like to be precise here. So pricing is not available yet for the all-wheel drive models. Those are coming later. These are just for the rear-wheel drive cars, but pretty cool stuff on this new model. Yeah, and then, of course, the rear-wheel drive cars once again launch in March of 21. So coming soon, uh, Tommy, you know, uh, oftentimes when we do these know your wrongs, right, we take opposite positions uh, because, well, it makes for interesting uh, viewing and it makes for uh, a lively discussion. Uh, but uh, let me ask you, honestly, do you like, I, I know you were defending it, I know you did it for the sake of no you're wrong, but do you really think it doesn't look like an angry beaver? No, it's horrible. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> They need to redo the front end of these cars, like, now. <laughs> I mean, the rest of it's cool, but the front end... <laughs> I, I, I mean, you know, remember, like, the old 2002 had this very elegant kidney grill? No, right? remember, yeah. Remember? It had it's these, horrible. Yeah, these two little holes, and it was just... Uh, and now uh, styling has become uh, so over the top. I mean, Lexus with the spindle grill, and, and if you look at the new GMC products. No, with those, those are better. This is just horrible. Anyway. I don't know what happened here. I guess I'm right. <laughs> Love you, BMW, but please <laughs> fix it. Please. <laughs> and I will actually go the opposite way. Now that I've been staring at this. Uh, no, he thinks it's horrible, too. He's just being I, I, nice. It's, it's, no, it's starting, it's starting to grow. Yeah, it's starting to grow. I, I want to see it in real life. I really do. I he really wants it. to drive it. That's why. But no, it's no, no, horrible. no, no. I want to see it in real life. No. All right, guys. Uh, Thanks for watching. Remember, you saw it here first on the Fast Lane Car. As always, check out what, Tommy? TFLcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews. And go over to TFL Talk where we're going to have a much more lively uh, discussion uh, that's going to go over both of these cars where we have a little bit more time and a little bit more free-flowing conversation. So thanks for watching and see you next time.